Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. In today's video we are ranking every Glow Recipe product that is available as of May 2021. Indeed, we have a lot to cover in today's video, but hey, go big or go home, that's what I always say. Is that what you always say, Alice? Grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea if you are here for the lowest rankings. And if you are short on time, please check the timestamps and links to the products in the description box below, although it does kind of spoil the ranking, so don't peek if you want to be surprised. No spoilers! And for those of you who are here for the long haul, let's talk about a couple important details before we get into the video. So my ranking system here, this is something that I have based on the quality of these products, how much they stand out on the market, as opposed to just my own personal preferences. I do have dry and acne prone skin, but I do think some of these products are actually incredible for oily skin so I'm going to try to try my hardest to rank those in a very fair way even though it's probably something that I personally won't repurchase. So you know the backstory on this video I did a three week revisiting of mostly Glow Recipe that was kind of interesting because I really got to see where Glow Recipe doesn't have products they don't have you know a daytime eye cream they don't have a sunscreen uh, but you know of course that's a-okay other brands can do that. I I do not think every brand needs to have every single product, so interesting though, nonetheless. But overall, some of these products I've been using for as long as two years at this point. A uh, quick disclosure, so Glow Recipe did send me three items earlier this year. They sent me the Plum Plump Serum, the new Avocado Serum, and then the Watermelon Glow Up Trio, which honestly... My brain pulled some tricks on me with this. It's three items, but it makes up a third of the line, if you count the minis in here. And my brain basically jumped to, well, you know, if you buy the rest of the line, that's kind of like you're getting a 33% off discount. Which, like, okay, brain, I see where you're coming from, but we can just be upfront with ourselves here and say, we just want to buy the rest of the line, don't we? I also really want to put in this intro why people like Glow Recipe, because I think this was something that was so funny. When I did the survey and I asked you what brand you want to see me do next, some people said, oh no, please don't let Glow Recipe win because I just do not understand the appeal, whereas in the end, Glow Recipe did win. So in the event that you are one of those perplexed beans going, I don't get it, let me tell you. The thing about Glow Recipe is that these products are really cute, they're really fun, they're beautiful textures, and they're very potent products. I mean, there's a lot of cute products on the market, but most of them just don't really do much at all. Whereas when you use Glow Recipe products, you do see results. For the most part, there's very, are there even any products in my fail category that don't work? Not really, they're all very potent. But you know, I do understand that not everybody is attracted to cuteness and fun scents. In fact, that's something that certain people within the skincare community very much do not want. People who are drawn to CeraVe and Paula's Choice and The Ordinary. You're probably not going to love this brand and that's totally okay. You know, I very much believe in everybody finding the skincare products that work for them and that they enjoy. I know we've talked about this before, but when you get really deep in a niche community, for example, the fragrance-free skincare communities, you can really start feeling so confused as as to how so many people seem to love this and think, you know, well, is it just all made up? I absolutely don't think it is. I've even had some of my real life friends ask me about this brand when they saw the picture I posted on Instagram. They said, what the heck is that brand? It's so cute. So again, this brand has that immediate mass appeal of the cuteness and then the long-term appeal of the fact that those cute products actually give results. So hopefully that explains it. And a final intro note here on allergies and acne. I want to make sure we're clear that not every product in this line, in this brand, does contain the word fragrance in the ingredients list. I'm still going to sit here and say 
every one of these products are scented. The problem that I have with just making the word fragrance a problem on the label is that that overlooks so many other potential allergens, potential inflammatory responses. There's just a lot more that can happen with uh, more complex formulas, especially when they have plant ingredients. So I would recommend you to be more cautious if you have more sensitive skin or any allergies or acne prone skin. Like I said, I've been using this brand for about two years, but you can see after three weeks of mostly exclusively using Glow Recipe, mm, my skin could be better. So it's possible that this was just too much of those plant ingredients and maybe I'm experiencing a slight inflammatory response just from too much. I don't wanna make this whole video dwelling on that though because there is a reason that there were fewer videos on this channel last week. We do have uh, some news, some life news kind of stuff, so that could also be influencing things a little bit, but we'll talk about that in another video in the future. I'm ready to rank. Are you ready to rank? Here's the thing. For the rankings here, I have a category of best, a category of excellent, and then my misses. I do not have a just okay or good category. Those are my three categories. That's so interesting in itself. I actually could not get past that. I said, you know, there's just no mediocre products. In my opinion, they're all either holy grail, excellent, or just a miss for me. So ranked from absolute best, holy grail will never be without, to worst, what happened, returned to the store. My number one pick, Will come as no surprise to most of you watching the Glow Recipe Avocado Sleeping Eye Mask. Avocado Melt Retinol Eye Sleeping Mask in particular. And by the way, that is a tremendous factor in why I like this particular product so much. To kind of give you a bit of a what I look for in eye cream, I really like a creamy consistency. I like to be able to feel the occlusive layer protecting my delicate eye area. And I get that from this plus the addition of encapsulated stabilized retinol. In terms of personal preference, the avocado line as a whole is my favorite line. I think it is the line for dry skin and for and or for sensitive skin. It doesn't really have a scent in the way that some of the other product lines within Glow Recipe do. So it's a much more gentle formula overall. But again, like I said in the intro, still very high impact. You will see a result in terms of your eye area smoothing, just looking brighter, all the benefits from retinol at a much lower concentration. See, that's the catch with retinol. Typically retinol serums are formulated for your face area and they shouldn't be used around that delicate eye area. So it could be a very smart choice to invest in a separate product made for the eye area. But the funny thing with the drugstore retinol eye creams is that they're still kind of pricey. So this one to me is where the price doesn't really seem to be too high in my personal opinion at least for what you are getting, which is a very effective product that actually lasts a long time too. With it having that very thick texture, you don't need a lot to feel that very occlusive protection. I just think it's a wonderful product. It's been an AHG of mine for a long time. I just adore it. Number two, this one might surprise you because it surprises me. I had this initially ranked kind of lower, but it grew on me a lot in a way that I do understand why it's one of Glow Recipe's best sellers. The Watermelon PHA and BHA Toner. Here's some reasons why initially I didn't think I was gonna rank this too high. I do like PHA, that's a great, much more gentle alternative to alpha hydroxy acids, but the BHA, this is not a salicylic toner. So if you're somebody like me who does deal with acne, you probably wanna look for the word salicylic acid, which is a very specific BHA, whereas the BHA in here is willow bark, and it's not as much an anti-acne treatment. That's why we don't have the word acne treatment on this bottle here. Instead, it's something that targets inflammation. So I think a part of why I was initially going to rank this lower is because I think that BHA can be confusing. It's not any kind of deception on Glow Recipe's behalf. They are correct in this title, but I think that people have come to associate BHA with salicylic acid, and yet there are other BHAs on the market. But the reason I ranked it so high is because after using this, 
It is actually a very effective product to help brighten your skin. And not only that, it's in my favorite texture. I love when I don't need a cotton pad whatsoever with a toner. This is a thick enough product that you can just pour it into the palms of your hand, pat it into your skin, and that helps you to waste so much less. Three weeks of using this, granted not every day because my skin is sensitive to any kind of chemical exfoliation, but every other day, three weeks, that's how little I used of this. This is actually, in my opinion, another one of those very worth it products because even though you could initially look at it and say the price is high per ounce, it lasts a long time in actual usage. And again, you know, while my skin did have some breakouts over these past three weeks, it's still surprisingly glowy. It still looks even, and even the inflammation from the acne is not too bad. And I think this was one of the biggest players in that because again, PHA is a very uh, restorative product. It really helps to resurface the skin. So overall, resurfacing, anti-inflammatory, lasts a long time. I gotta rank this number two. A quick note on the scent though, it does have a watermelon scent to it, but it is lighter than some of the other products. Now, I saw in the reviews some people saying that it's just because this was part of the set. I, I am not sure. I'm not sure what's going on. I wouldn't want this to be stronger. I would probably have to rank it lower if it was really high in that watermelon smell. So I hope that it's just a change in general because you don't need a ton of fragrance in my opinion. I don't think skincare has to smell quite like your perfume products. This is just a nice level of fragrance to me. Coming in at the number three spot is the Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. I absolutely adore this, but I wanna make sure I'm clear. Part of why this is getting ranked so high is because it is the best makeup spray that I've ever encountered. This is a bit more of a skincare video, so let me make sure I'm clear on that. If you're somebody who wears makeup, you know how when you apply your blush and your bronzer and your highlighter, sometimes it looks like it's sitting on the surface of your skin? If you bring in a mist, it can help to really get that bronzer and blush to look like it's coming from within your skin instead of sitting on top. The problem with makeup sprays though is there's a lot of confusion as to whether they dry your skin out or whether they're the type that melds the blush and the bronzer together. Some of them spray way too much mist. This is just kind of the best of everything. It does not dry out your skin, no added alcohol in this. The mist is truly ultra fine. So, you know, I'm ranking this third because it's the best makeup mist I've ever seen. Is it the absolute best as a skincare mist? I'm gonna actually actually say no on that. I like the peach and lily more specifically used as a spray toner. This one, I don't want to use it as that because it's just so good for makeup. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, something you can probably pass on if you do not wear makeup, but if you do, and then in the number four spot, the recently very hyped, nice into my dew drops. This one also moved up my list because initially it didn't do that much for my dry skin. Here's the thing, I do like these products that give you this beautiful glow from within, but because I have dry skin, to give me that glow from within, you gotta really be giving me some extra oils. That's why my favorite in this category is the Glowbiotics Cream Oil is the actual name of that product. Whereas this one doesn't really give you any of that oil effect, but that's why over time I decided to rate this one higher because again, this is one of those where if you have oily skin, I think you are going to absolutely love this. It gives you this incredible glow from within with no added mica, no glitter, no added dyes. It's just a beautiful product that also gives you skincare benefits from the niacinamide in here. Yeah, it's actually beautiful. Again, if you have dry skin, I don't think you're gonna see the same effects from this one. Look for a glowy product that says it contains oil, but if you have oily skin, you don't want that oil. This one is gonna be for you. We're moving into the excellent category here, and I do have to check my notes for this. I'm not as certain of where these fall. I just know these are all excellent to me. 
But apparently, in the number five spot, I have the Watermelon Pink Dream Body Cream. So the reason I wanted to rank this so high is kind of similar to what I was saying in the intro, where I said these are very scented products, but that may not work out for everyone. The thing that's so nice about coming out with a very scented, enjoyable to use body cream is that more people will be able to use this product and it truly does smell amazing. At least if you like a very strong watermelon Jolly Rancher scent. Listen, I understand if you're a Redditor and you are saying nope, nope. But it's so thoughtful that now, you know, people who have more sensitive skin on their faces can still purchase this and get all of that same enjoyment from Glow Recipe without potentially triggering some kind of a response, triggering too much acne, that kind of thing. So I do really enjoy this. It's one of those products where I actually almost didn't buy this. It's the last product that I bought for this trial here. I almost didn't because I was thinking, well, do I really need another body lotion? But I'm glad I did because it's fun. It's fun. It just encapsulates everything that Glow Recipe is. And again, in a way that will work out for even people with acne prone, sensitive skin. So yeah, it's one of my top picks. In the number six spot is another product that I personally really, really like, but I'm going to try to explain why I like it so much and also why I think it may not be for everybody. That is the Avocado Ceramide Recovery Serum. I love this one. I think this is an amazing new release that really is something that the Glow Recipe line needed. Again, we're in the avocado line, which I feel is for dry and sensitive skin. And I actually do feel like this is a very helpful product addition for that line. So what this is made for is for redness, that is a result of dry and dehydrated skin. I noticed early on that some of the reviews were saying, I bought this product to help with redness and it didn't do anything for my redness. So I wanna make sure you note that on the website, the description for this does say that full sentence. It says for redness and irritation for dry and dehydrated skin or from those. I don't think it's gonna help with the redness directly associated with say cystic acne, probably not even rosacea. It's made specifically for irritated skin. That's the purpose of the ceramides in here. That's the purpose of the avocado, which is another soothing ingredient. It's made to soothe dryness. Think of this as kind of a moisture barrier repair product, not a targeted acne treatment or a targeted rosacea treatment. So again, speaking to you as somebody who does have dry skin and it can get very uncomfortable, yeah, I absolutely love this. I see what the hype is behind it. And yet I can take a step back and see why some people are saying, what are y'all talking about? This did nothing for me. And it's just a, a different type of redness. I can't even criticize Glow Recipe because they're very clear. By the way, just to make sure, remember how I did that Wayback Machine stuff in that controversial video there? I did that with this description. And nope, that's what it's always said. It is always said it is for that specific type of redness. So, you know, again, respect to Glow Recipe for being clear on it. But I think that sometimes that can get lost in translation. Hopefully that helps to clarify it. Or not to clarify it because it's not an acne treating serum. <laughs> Huh. Number seven on my list is another one of those products where it's not really for me, but I see it and I respect it and it's unique to the market. And that is the Watermelon Glow Pink Juice Moisturizer. If you saw the video where I initially talked about this, this is just not for dry skin in the slightest. It is so lightweight on my skin, it just evaporates or so it feels for me. But you know, I had my partner try this. I said, I think you're going to like this. Funny enough, she actually does not have oily skin. She has more normal to dry skin, but she hates the feeling of moisturizer. Hates it. I had her try this and she said, you know what? That's actually a moisturizer I could see myself using. You do not understand how difficult that is for me to, number one, wrap my brain around as somebody who loves occlusive products, but number two, to have so much skincare come in this house and we can't find her a moisturizer. We've had hundreds of moisturizers enter this house. She never liked one until this, so I gotta rank this one high. I will say the scent for me is something that, again, I don't I don't like. It's a little bit too strong. It's still not, it's not too sweet though in the way the body cream, the body cream is very sweet. This one just smells more like watermelon. 
and yeah, you know, it just disappears right into your skin. So again, a unique product that I think the market needed. If you've never been able to find a moisturizer you'll enjoy, this one might be the one for you. Number eight is where I bring a little bit more of my own personal taste back into the conversation. I do really like the Banana Souffle Moisture Cream. Again, not for everybody. I think if you have oily skin, you're probably not gonna like it as much. But what is so fascinating to me about this product is I don't need a lot of it. I take a little bit of this, massage it all over my entire face, and my dry skin does not sit there and say, well, we drank all the moisturizer, can we have more? Instead, my skin stays hydrated all day long. Are you kidding me? It's so rare to find that. By the way, this is my replacement. Let me show you what I've been testing for three weeks. Actually, for way more than three weeks. I got this over the holiday season, and I'm finally almost almost finished with this. You need so little of this. That is just not a sentence that I usually am able to say as someone with dry skin. I go through my moisturizer very quickly, usually. I will admit I'm not the world's biggest fan of the smell. It's a very artificial banana Laffy Taffy. I don't think it's gonna be for everybody, but I'm able to look past it because of how much I enjoy the feel of this one. And some people like that smell. So if you like that smell, you'll probably enjoy this one. Do you want to know my theory on why I think I don't like artificial fruit scents? So I grew up in a very all-natural household. I did not even see Laffy Taffy or fruit roll-ups until I was in grade school. In fact, I remember the first time I ever saw a fruit roll-up. I was in second grade. A kid in my class had one, and I just remember being horrified, horrified at it. I asked him what this weird thing that he was eating was, and he was like, it's a fruit roll-up. And I was going, that's not what fruit looks like. But you know, my mom raised me on granola, apple cider vinegar. <laughs> These are things that I actually genuinely enjoyed as a kid because I never knew what Smarties were. And I kid you not, I've never really developed an appreciation for those pure sugar type of candies. I like chocolate a lot, but Smarties, I, I, see, I don't even know the names of any of these candies, but yeah, I just, mm, 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 mm. So these next four are products where I don't necessarily think I would repurchase these, and yet I still might because I live with someone who loves quite a few of these. So we're still staying in my excellent category here. Just for me personally, I also think there are some good alternatives. So I might as well throw you some of those alternatives while we talk about these. See, it might surprise you that for me, the Avocado Melt Retinol Sleeping Mask is in my number nine spot because I actually do really like this. I think it's a great product. It's still a very fun product. It reminds me a lot of applying guacamole to my face, which luckily I do like guacamole doesn't really have any kind of a scent to it, much like the avocado line, but still some plant-based ingredients. The thing is, I just don't necessarily think it stands out as much. For me, my favorite retinol overnight product is the Stradia Overnight Retinol. Night Shift? Night Shift, I think that's the name of that product. It's just such a great product that discloses the percentage of retinol, which, you know, that's optional. Glow Recipe doesn't. They don't have to. But nonetheless, it means a lot to me when companies do, so I really like that Stradia does disclose this. I suspect this is probably close to that one. This one seems to be a very light retinol. It's still encapsulated, which is why they're able to package it in a jar like this. If it was not encapsulated or stabilized, a jar would not be optimal. So I still think it's a fun product. I still think it's an effective product. It's just not my favorite overnight retinol product. And I noticed they pulled this from Sephora. So I wouldn't be too surprised if we see some changes in this product going forward, if they discontinue it and redo it, which is something Glow Recipe has done quite a few times in the past. Number 10 for me is the Plum Plump Hyaluronic Serum. This actually moved up my list. Initially, you know, I don't think I was that blown away by this product solely because I am in the skincare community, I am immersed with skincare, and I'm so tired of hyaluronic acid. But like we talked about in, which video did we talk about that? I think it was the Pharmacy Feeling Good review. You know, some people are still looking for hyaluronic acid. In fact, some people who are not immersed in this community. L wait, let me tell you another story. We've got some story time sprinkled into this video, huh? So you know how I've been decluttering my skincare? I've been passing it along to my friends. One of my friends said to me, hey, do you have any products that have uh, hydraulic acid in them? 
I was like, I do not have any skincare products that have hydraulic acid in them. I do have products that have hyaluronic acid in them. Not making this up. I am not making this up. That's the difference between being immersed and what other people see. Other people are going, yeah, I think I heard, yeah, hy hy hydraulic acid. I think that's something I want in my skincare. Public service announcement. You don't want hydraulic acid in your skincare. Thanks for tuning in. Anyway, some people are still looking for hyaluronic acid serums, but the thing is, I was kind of not that excited about this. You know, it's really cute packaging in the shape of a plum. Yes, you get extra benefits from the plum ingredients, but initially I was just thinking, yeah, but you could get one from the Inky List. But it was this three week trial that changed my mind on this. I actually do think this stands out. What's interesting about this is I feel that there is a level of repair to this. When I started digging deeper, they actually have a very reparative, restorative peptide in this product. So, you know, it is another one of those products that in spite of its name, it's a lot more than just a hyaluronic serum. In the number 11 spot, the Blueberry Bounce Gentle Cleanser. I feel almost rude doing this because this is my partner's absolute favorite cleanser. And again, she's tried a lot of cleansers because she lives with a skincare enthusiast. So I feel kind of mean saying it's the number 11 spot for me. But the thing is for me, it just doesn't seem any better than the Good Molecules Rose Water Cleansing Gel. Yes, it is absolutely gentle. It does not strip your skin. That is amazing. I love the light blueberry smell. I love the very soft foaming effect. It's not a harsh foaming, just very gentle. Uh, but you know, I guess perhaps where things are different for me is that I don't use this to remove makeup. Ara does, and she says that for makeup removal, it's incredible. But for me, you know, you've seen some of my more intense makeup looks. I always use a cleansing balm, so I don't really know if this removes makeup because that's my approach to it. I'm just not looking for makeup removal and cleanser in one product. So it's possible that you could personally rate this higher, but for me, I would rather save my money and buy the good molecules. Personal preference plays a huge role. Again, great product, just not my personal favorite. In the number 12 spot, my last in the excellent category. This is a favorite for so many. The Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask. I wanna make sure I'm clear. The reason I am ranking this in the number 12 spot is not because it doesn't work. It does. This actually, you will wake up with very glowing skin. It helps to smooth your skin. My problem with it, is the packaging. I think this should be in a pump packaging because every time I stick my little scoop into this product, it all falls off the scoop. It's so runny that it just takes me forever of glop. That's not how I glop this on. <laughs> I'm basically saying it's runny, and I think if it was in a pump, I would not have that same problem. It just takes so long to apply it. But yeah, it's a great product. It does certainly have a scent. This one is one of the stronger scents in my opinion. But again, you know, fragrance works out for some people. Some people don't have any problem with it. So personally, I have to rate it lower for those reasons. But again, not because it's not an effective product. Change the packaging glow recipe. I think it would make it so much better. Anyway, in the number 13 spot. Glow recipe, why did you do me dirty with this one? I just hauled this and I said, the Pineapple Sea Bright Serum has been reformulated. It no longer stinks like it used to. I think I was wrong. I do not know what happened in the roughly three weeks of using this product, but somehow the initial nice smell of this faded into something that it does not smell good anymore. And it's so interesting because now I'm backtracking in my mind. The reason I didn't buy this initially is not because of the ingredients. The ingredients list on this looks absolutely incredible, rich in vitamin C, one of my favorite ingredients. But when I went to Sephora to smell this two years ago, I grabbed the bottle in store, the tester, smelled it and went, absolutely not, we are never buying that. So now I'm starting to think this could just be a situation of the smell changes really rapidly after opening. Whether or not that means it's going bad or changing is something that's debatable, I don't know. I did read through a lot of reviews on this product and a lot of people seem to be saying something very similar to what I'm saying here where they could not handle the smell. A lot of people say it did go bad. I don't think it went bad on me, but nonetheless, when I pulled this out of my routine, the breakouts I was having did start to get better. So. 
I don't know. I don't want to say that's what happened, but I will be returning this. Also, is it just me or is this really the only kind of packaging miss? I mean, I guess it kind of looks like a pineapple, but I kind of feel like it looks a little more like a, uh, I don't know how those work. Did you get what I was trying to go for with that reenactment? Okay, let's move on. Number 14, and we are in my misses category, by the way, forgot to say that initially. I don't necessarily recommend these three. The Glow Recipe Lip Pop, it's just not a favorite for me. It's expensive for the amount you get. I still think it's effective, in fact, I've had a lot of emotions with this particular lip balm. I liked it initially. I do like that it gives your lips kind of a, a pretty pink color, but for me with lip balms, I reapply them so constantly that I think the very gentle physical exfoliation in here became too much for me, especially in the sunlight. So I'd been wearing this during Mardi Gras of... Wait, does this have to be three years ago? Maybe my timelines were all messed up. No, this has to be two years ago because it was a regular Mardi Gras. Nothing changed the world. Okay, that's how long ago this was. Anyway, I ended up getting a sunburn on my lips. This was the only product that I had been using, so I traced it right back to this. And that's something that I'd never encountered before, ever. Uh, so, you know, there's some gentle exfoliation. Don't apply it so much and be in direct sunlight that you may see negative problems, negative consequences from that. Uh, but then, you know, also, I don't think it's a very highly effective product, which contradicts what I just said. But by that, I mean that there are many more hydrating lip balms on the market. This one just isn't very hydrating. I guess it's exfoliating, but you could also just use a lip scrub. So for me, it's just kind of a miss. This is the second time that I've purchased this and I'm not gonna buy it again because it's just not a good match for me. I like hydrating lip balms. My favorite would be probably, probably Kopari. I like the fresh balms and honestly stuff like the Laneige. I mean, the Laneige lip mask is so much more value for the money than this one. So for me, I think it's a cute product that is really much more of a lipstick than a lip balm, so I guess I can see buying it for that purpose, but it's just not a favorite. And number 15, the product that I liked the absolute least is the Papaya Sorbet Enzyme Cleansing Balm, which you may notice I do not have because I have already returned it. Okay, so here's some things with this one. First of all, I did have a correlation with breakouts. I don't like saying things like this made me break out because acne's complex. There could certainly be a lot more things associated with it, but kind of like I was saying with the pineapple serum and this one as well, it's interesting that the breakouts did kind of stop when I stopped using the product. Correlation, not cause, but interesting nonetheless. Uh, however, I also just didn't like it as a cleansing balm. And if you know this channel, you know that I love cleansing balms. This one was just a miss for me. And it was sad because it actually had some immense potential when I first used it. I loved how creamy it was, how it spread and removed makeup, especially in my eye area. It didn't drip into my eyes. The problem was it left a film behind. A washcloth did help a lot, even though they don't direct you to use it that way. I have a whole review if you're interested in more on this. Uh, but yeah, it just, it did not work out for me. It just was too much of a film. The fact that I did see some breakouts, whether it caused it or not, it just was a miss for me. And I don't think I'm alone. I think that, I think the reason the Pharmacy Green Clean is so popular is because that one really does not leave a film. I've noticed that some cleansing balms do leave a film behind and they tend to not be the more popular ones. Another example of one that leaves a film behind is the Drunk Elephant Slay cleansing balm. Mm -mm, can't do that one either. Whereas the uh, vanilla cleansing balm, the pharmacy cleansing balm, the Clinique cleansing balm, not a film. So those are the type of cleansing balm that I like to use. If you enjoy those intense scents, I would highly recommend for you in particular that new pharmacy apple balm. Oh my goodness. It smells so good. It is so fun to use with the two layers in it. It's a fantastic cleansing balm. I would just personally pass on the Glow Recipe one. And that is it. That is all 15 of the Glow Recipe products ranked from best to worst. 
I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you gathered overall that I do really enjoy this brand. Just nothing is for everybody. 80% in excellent or HG status is a wonderful review for a brand. So hopefully nobody gets too upset with this video. Again, if you don't like anything I said in this video, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Feel free to agree. Feel free to disagree. And thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a truly wonderful week. Make sure to give this video a like and hit subscribe if you did enjoy this video and I will see you all next time.